Hey guys, I'm back, and welcome to your first intermediate Roblox Lua tutorial. I'm gonna have to get used to saying intermediate. Um, and I thought a good first topic to cover would be module scripts. Uh, I think I mentioned these in one of my first few videos when I was talking about getting around studio and uh, such. But now we're finally gonna go into it. Module scripts can be very useful mainly for maintaining code better. So let's say you have um, you're making an RPG and you have a bunch of mobs, a bunch of enemies in your map and inside them they have they all have the same script that when they die give the player that killed them some gold or whatever. Say you wanna edit the amount of gold that each mob gives or even a certain type of mob you might have that number inside the script as a variable or uh, in a physical manifestation like an int value or number value instead of that we can simply use a module script and we can edit that code that function that variable all from one place and then we can use a function called require to get that module script and uh, spread that code around for each mob. So I'm going to show you what I mean. I think I'm going to cut this video up into two parts. Actually, no, I'm not going to insert that yet. Yeah, I think I'm going to cut this video up into two parts and uh, have a have a have an explanation here. Uh, yeah, just an explanation here. Then next video we'll get into practical use. All right, so I have the script first. Um, then I'm gonna insert module script in replicated storage. Okay, so a module script, essentially it's just a table. It's usually a table. It's not necessarily a table, but it's usually a table. Um, it has to return something. It always has to have this return at the bottom of the script. So uh, first, let me guys show you something. Local tab equals empty tab function uh, p and print called func. Uh, shoot, what did I do? Um, okay, wait. I just derped up. Local function p print called func. So we have one member of our table tab, and it is p, the function p. Um, tab dot p. Let's see what that outputs. Oops. Uh, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, sorry. I see what I did wrong. Uh, the table is string keys, not number keys, regular number keys. So, okay, back to what I was saying. So, you see how we have the first member of this table. It is a function, the function P. You can put functions in tables just like any other data type, a string, number, boolean. Uh, so we're accessing the first index of tab and we're calling it with the parentheses. Or we could just put the parentheses. Uh, no, we couldn't do that. Well, yeah, we could. We'd have to print tab one. And we're going to return called func instead. There we go. So now the first index of tab is whatever the function p returns because we're calling it in the table here. It outputs the same thing called func. So 
now you know you can add functions to tables. You can put functions in tables. Local tab equals an empty table tab dot uh, p equals function uh, message return no print message uh, tab dot p hello my friends and that outputs hello my friends so uh, that's another way you can add a function to a table um, this would be called a string key uh, do I really want to explain string keys right now in dictionaries no I'm gonna get into string keys and dictionaries in a different video but this is one way we can add a function to a table much like how we're going to add it to our module later. Or we can do function tab colon p and <coughs> sorry and have our uh, parameters here and we can call it with a colon instead of a dot. It does the same thing. <coughs> Personally in most cases I like the colon better because it looks cooler I guess. Okay, that was stupid. Okay, so uh, so now we're gonna go back to a module script. Local module equals empty table module dot p equals function message uh, print message. Okay, so local module uh, local mod equals require oh god kitty get down no kitty has claws sorry guys uh, require game dot replicated storage dot module script so this require function that I mentioned earlier essentially it's just a way that you're gonna get the module script you can require it uh, one of two ways in game with a uh, hierarchy like we're doing here or you can require it by asset ID which is when you upload a module to a Roblox model and you name the module script main module like this uh, but right now I'm not gonna go into reasons to do that for now we're just gonna assume the modules in our game so mod dot p we're gonna call that function with hi 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 so essentially this is working just like I showed you guys with the table because we're returning the table module and it has a member of it p let's for IV in pairs mod do print IV and it outputs P and it's you know what P is a function with an ID because blah 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 whatever it's a function um, okay so that's uh, basically the useful it's not the usefulness of modules I haven't showed you the usefulness yet uh, what else did I want to go over? Modules don't just have to have functions. Uh, they can also have just regular variables as proper properties. No, that doesn't make sense. Let me show you what I mean. Module.var equals true. And now it's going to output var true. Because var is the name of the index and true is its value basically whereas a regular table has numbers as indices uh, we can most modules are gonna have strings as indices I'll go into that more in depth in another video those are called dictionaries when um, your table has string keys I'll definitely go into that in another video uh, we could do module uh, one 
equals var. var. And then it's going to print 1, the index, and var. <coughs> uh, when your table has number keys and string keys, uh, that's called having mixed keys. You really usually don't want that, actually. Uh, again, I'll go into why on a later video on dictionaries. So, you know, and if you want to share variables or functions throughout many scripts, that is what modules primarily are useful for. Um, as opposed to a module, you could use a G, if you guys have ever heard of that, but don't use G underscore G. But essentially, that's a... Uh, a global table like a module there is one uh, how do I explain this you have one underscore G for that stands for global you have one global for server scripts and you have one for local scripts if you so choose you can't declare G dot bar equals blah, blah 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 and then use then try to call this from a local script you can't do that but we're not learning about the global table right now, we're learning about modules. Modules are 9 out of 10 times the way to go. I've never had to use the global table. <clears throat> I've, I've always stuck with modules. They will serve you well. Uh, so in our module, let's say we declared this local uh, var equals true. We're going to run our code again. It does not print that variable because if you have if you have anything local in your module aside from what it returns, then it's not going to be included in what the module returns. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to just return var, I'd run this and it's going to error because uh, that's not a table, that's just a string print mod, and now it's going to print true, or it's not a string, it's a bool, sorry. It printed true because we just returned the variable. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Uh, I don't want to make this video too long. I guess that's another resolution I have for 2017. I don't want to make super long videos like I have before. So um, I think that's all I'm going to go into today. I'm probably forgetting something, but I'm going to cover a practical use for modules in our next video. Probably going to use the example I said earlier with uh, enemy mobs or something. So if you guys have questions, just shoot them to me in the comments. I think that's it. Uh, I will see you guys next time. Have a good night.